Welcome. It's a Friday morning. We're glad to have you on here. We're always glad to be able to come on, talk about Jesus a little bit to get our day started. Uh, representing Marshall this week. Marshall headed to Notre Dame. Um, they played Ohio State tough a couple years ago, and uh, this will be a good test for everybody. Welcome. It's a Friday morning. We're glad to have you on here. We're always glad to be able to come on, talk about Jesus a little bit to get our day started. Uh, representing Marshall this week. Marshall headed to Notre Dame. Um, they played Ohio State tough a couple years ago, and uh, this will be a good test for everybody. And I uh, watched Notre Dame and Ohio State last week, matter of fact. And I think Notre Dame's pretty good. So, safe travels for everybody we're hoping and praying for a safe weekend for everybody and we're glad to have you on here benita it's good to see you this morning i hope you're doing okay um hope paula is doing okay matthew harris we're glad to have you here we're so thankful for all the things you're doing putting us out there on so many different social media sites uh one of, one of the things i do i didn't want to tell you is the gideon ministry if you notice um uh, when you go travel somewhere, you see in the hotels, a lot of times there'll be a Bible in the hotel. And uh, those Bibles are there for a couple of reasons. Number one is that's sort of how the Gideon started. There were two traveling salesmen. And in the old days, there weren't a lot of extra rooms, so they piled people in, you know, there might be two, two beds in a room. And it happened about a hundred and probably 20 years ago, I think now. And this one guy said, hey, I'm going to pray before I go to sleep. I always promised my mother when I was out traveling that I would pray. Is it okay with you? And the guy said, you know, it sounds like a great idea. Let's pray. And so I guess they kneel down, they pray. And afterwards, they're like, you know, it'd really be cool if there was a Bible in every hotel room. And so out of that, you know, it took a little while, of course, to get started. But out of that grew the Gideons International. And the Gideons International are, are, is something that is uh, very important to me uh, because every dollar that is given to that group goes to um, buy Bibles. And so there you go. There's a little bit of history about when you open that hotel room uh, desk drawer and you see that Bible in there. That is how that came to be. So it's pretty cool. So Matthew, just what you're doing today is putting the gospel out to all the world through all these social networks. So people are, and once again, on the hotels, a lot of people check into hotels to commit suicide because they don't want to make a mess at their house. And we've got a lot of testimonials from the Gideons over the years where people have checked in and, and they were going to kill themselves and they open that drawer and start reading that Bible. So there's a lot of depression going on from COVID, from just lost hope from just the crazy world that we're living in, and we can't focus on that. And you say, well, how do I not focus when I've got to live in this crazy world, when i got to make a living in this crazy world, and when I'm sending my kids out every single day into this crazy situation? So once again, I've got to have a hope. I've got to have something to look forward to. And that's another reason I wanted to go back through the answers that are in the Bible. Because yesterday, we covered the concept of what. where's the verse that says, hey, I'm not good enough to be saved, you know. Well, you would be right, but if you go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, it explains a little bit about that situation. So, Maureen, good to see you this morning. Kind of re regrouping or uh, kind of recapping, I guess you'd say, what we talked about yesterday. And then, of course, the other verse is pretty much a well-known verse because it was talking about, I got too much to give up. Man, I'm having too much fun out here, and I really don't want to put Jesus first. You know, because uh, I, I think Jesus is going to take away from the fun that I'm having and, I, and I'm just not interested. And Jesus gave us that verse over Matthew where he says, you know, what if you did gain the whole world? What if all the working and all the stuff you did, if you gained everything that could be had and you were Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos or uh, Elon Musk or Warren Buffett or any of the wealthiest people in the world, 
when you died, you'd leave all that behind, number one. But the second thing is, you know, eternity in hell is just as long as heaven. So you don't want to, you don't want to end up in that situation. Now, here's one that I faced as a young kid as I was under severe conviction many times and I knew what I should do, but I thought I was cool. And I thought the cool thing to do was to keep chasing after the devil and the things that the devil had for me, right? And it and it's a pretty simple verse in First Peter chapter four. We just came through it, um, and it is that we were afraid of ridicule. We were afraid somebody would make fun of us. I think today in society, you know, we want to hear the dirty joke at work. We want to associate with people that we know are non-believers. We want to be so much a part of the things in the world that we're still afraid at all ages of this ridicule. Now, I'm not saying that you stick your nose up under somebody's fist, right, and say, you're going to hell, you know, because I knew I was going to hell. And probably if you just stuck your, you know, nose up under my fist, <laughs> you know, I might have dinged you a little bit myself, right? Because we all know where we're at. So if if yanking and pushing and knocking and banging on you is not getting you to heaven, why don't we just kind of show you? And a great example is Dolly Parton. A lot of people love Dolly Parton. And she was in an interview, I don't know, it might have been a year ago, maybe longer. And it's it's a well-known fact that Dolly kind of took Billy Ray Cyrus under her wing and kind of helped his career. And when Miley Cyrus came along, uh, Dolly is his godmother, mother, right? So uh, it was asked in the interview, it said, you know, do you ever think about sitting Miley down and talking to her and straightening her up, man? Because she's just, she's just a wild child, and, you know. She's a maniac and just on and on and on about this, this young kid, which, you know, you add money and fame and power to somebody that's 16, 17, 18 years old. Miley was probably not doing anything that you and I wouldn't have been doing if we had the money. And Dolly looked him straight in the eye and she said, you know what, rather than tell her, I'd rather show her. And as Christians, I think a lot of time we miss the opportunity to show somebody because if I jump on Tim and I say, Tim, man, I saw you do something and, and that's the kind of thing that's going to put you in hell and Tim doesn't realize he's got eternal life and maybe Tim wanders off and says, you know what, man, Lunsford told me that I'm not going to heaven now because he saw me do something stupid. Well, if you follow me around, <laughs> you're going to see all kinds of stupid stuff, right? So it's not based on that. But as a Christian, our job is to be light to somebody's world, right? So I'm not going to be able to make you do anything for Jesus Christ. But if you see what I'm doing, right? We're teaching Sunday school at 6.55 in the morning. People were showing up, Maureen and Karen and Tim, all of you guys were here together for a mission. We're not here to, to listen to me chatter on. We're here to maybe stop somebody else that has been yanked on and knocked on and banged on in church. Come to the altar. We know you're a sinner. We know you messed up last night. Get up here and confess your sins. You know, I don't know that I'd ever got saved in a big church like that, you know, or a church that is sitting there just pounding and pounding and pounding, you know. Now, some people say, well, you know, that's the conviction. And, you know, once you take that first step toward God, he'll meet you. And that's absolutely true, Right. But here's the thing. God is just as much right here with us this morning because where two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord, he's in the midst. So don't miss your opportunity to talk to God because the devil's sidetracking you. And that's what this thing is all about. So afraid of ridicule is a very real thing. The devil says that, man, don't get involved in this. Yeah, listen, you're a Christian. You can't go out here and do this. Somebody's going to see you. Somebody's going to tell on you. You can't go down here and associate with these people. When you go back and look and you find out that's where Jesus was hanging out was with the public and the sinners. Let me read the verse. First Peter chapter 4, verse 14. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happier ye. For the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Open their evil, op uh, on their part, I'm sorry, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. So what are we talking about? Listen, there's people, I was out with uh, my alumni group a few years ago, and there was a guy that I never played baseball with, but he was there 
at the end of the time when I was trying to graduate and I didn't play my last year. And he kind of made fun of Jesus for a couple of days. And I just thought, you know, I really want to be the old Brooke Lunsford and, and, and really tell this guy, you know, you need to shut up because you're stupid, you know. But then I thought, you know, well, what am I supposed to do right here? And I thought, well, number one, is it a test from God? Is God wanting me to see, am I going to keep shining in the light? You know, am I going to keep my mouth shut? Because when my mouth opens, a lot of times the light gets turned off. Am I the only one on that? But when I start my mouth, it's like, you know, boom, you know, he's not coming to Jesus because his, his idea of a Christian is Brooke Lunsford and Brooke Lunsford just went, you know, crazy on him and told him about he's going to hell. And if you don't like Jesus and you make fun of Jesus, you're going to end up in hell, you know, and so I just let it ride. And then a couple of days, you know, as we got into it more and more, he started coming around with some of the comments and things that he was saying. Now, the old Brook Lunsford or the Brook Lunsford that God saved and Jesus saved would have loved to have just landed on him, Right. You know, well, that's fine if you don't believe in Jesus. It doesn't matter whether you believe or not. Just enjoy yourself in hell, right? Because you're going to wake up. There's going to be gnashing of the teeth. You're going to be eternally separated from the people you love. And according to Luke 16, 8, you may get a glimpse of the people that are in heaven. And you may get a glimpse of all the people that tried to be a light to you. And you weren't interested. But you go ahead and have a fun time in hell. Well, how far is that ministry going to get us, Right? So anyway, being afraid of the ridicule, remember from 1 Peter here, please, you know, live your Jesus out in front of people. Don't hide Jesus, right? And if people still want to want to talk mean about you, if they still want to make fun of your Lord, listen, I, I'm not saying you don't stand up for Jesus, but what I'm saying is you make somebody mad, you hurt somebody's feelings, you got no chance to draw them back, in my opinion. Now, at the same time, there's going to be places and times out here where you're going to have to draw the line and you're going to have to tell it the way it is. And it's, you know, it can be crazy. All right. I'm going to move along here a little bit this morning. My commentary may be more than than you guys are interested in, but there's another problem in society today. And that's it's almost similar to what we just talked about. If you're afraid of the ridicule and you don't speak up about Jesus, the devil's thrilled about that. But there's another group of people that, that are going around out here in the world, and they're like, well, listen, if Lunsford is saved, man, I used to run with Brooke Lunsford. If, if he's saved, I'm fine. If God would want Brooke Lunsford in heaven, there's no way God's going to keep me out. We've visited an old ball coach, Greg Lunsford, my brother and I, and we're like, coach, you know, you're getting some age on you. We, you know, there's no use to sugarcoat things in some ways, you know. And I said, you know, you're getting to the point where you need to think about this thing. And he says, well, why wouldn't God take me? And I said, well, God won't just take you because, you know, Jesus, of course, did die for all. But you've got to understand something about yourself, that you're a sinner. And you've got to understand God sent the remedy for sin, which was Jesus. And that's why Jesus gave up his life. That's why Jesus shed his blood, because without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness or remission of sin. So we couldn't have done this thing without Jesus. And if you don't acknowledge Jesus and all the things Jesus has done, you can't get there. And so, you know, he kind of pauses for a minute and then he just kind of launches back in. Well, I know I'm going to get in because I'm as good as anybody. And and I'm, I'm like, listen, according to Titus chapter three, verse five, there's nobody good enough to get into heaven right? There's none good. No, not one. That's Romans 3.10 and 3.23. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I probably use those verses more with you guys than anybody. Why? Because grandma used those verses on, on us kids, right? But here it is in Titus 3.5. Not by works of righteousness. See, I can't work my way into heaven. There's nothing I can do to make me good enough for heaven. There's a bunch of people that are out here doing a bunch of great works that are going to tear heaven wide or tear hell wide open one day. Why? Because they got so caught up in being the best chamber president, being the best rotary president, being the best little league president. And man, they worked and they worked and they worked. Man, and they were honored and they were honored and they were honored and they went through life and man, they got trophies. They got their names on buildings. Maybe they're politicians and they put their names on and they think they've done something and they think they're as good as anybody and boom, they wake up in a place called hell. 
I do not know Queen Elizabeth. She may have been a powerhouse Christian, right? But the whole world is mourning over something that we're not supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be kings and lords over people. There's only one king, right? But anyway, I'm not going to get in there and hurt your feelings on that this morning. So not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but it's from the mercy that Jesus saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost. What in the world did that mean, right? God showed us mercy in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, we didn't deserve Jesus. We could never deserve Jesus, right? Why? Because he was the sinless uh, uh, Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, but he was also fully God. Why would a God die for a world that's not interested in him. Listen, do you realize how powerful it is this morning that you're saved? If you're saved, and if you're not saved, please get into the family of God today. Because in John chapter 1, verse 12, Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, unto them gave he the power to become the sons of God. You get saved, you're a son of God. How powerful is that, right? But the thing is, to think we're already good enough, we're going to miss this whole boat. Our pride and arrogance, hell's full of pride and arrogance because we missed the part of the mercy of God. See, it didn't improve Jesus' status one bit to die. He was already God. And why does he sweat drops of blood there in the Garden of Gethsemane? Why does he pray three times a prayer that he knows is not going to get answered? Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass me by. Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass me by. And that third prayer was, wasn't it? Father, man, let this cup pass me by. And then he says, but nevertheless, thy will be done. See, from the foundation of the world, Jesus knows this is the only time in human history where the demonic forces are going to have an opportunity to beat on Jesus. And that's why he's beaten unrecognizable as a man is because for the first time ever, the devil gets to take out all his anguish on Jesus. And he's beaten that way because where he's fully God, you can't kill God. And there is a prime example that each one of us should put in our minds and live forever. Jesus is not some pretty picture on your church wall with a couple drips of blood, right? <clears throat> Jesus looks like somebody took a meat mallet and, and beat the skin off his face and off, off his body, you know? And until you get a visual of what Jesus has done for you and the mercy that came from that and the unmerited favor that God showed toward us while we were a sinner. See, most people, I'll do something for you if you do something for me. You just got to do your something for me first. Then you can count on me. It's not what Jesus did. Jesus died for the whole world when the whole world was in sin. Now that the gospel has gone out to all the world and, and 80 or 90% have rejected it, you should jump sky high if you're a child of the king because most people are never going to get this. Now, we want everybody to get saved because it's God's will. It's not God's will that any would perish. It's a very scripture, right? But truth is, people are not going to turn their back on the world. They can't put their phone down. They can't put the evil that's in there down. And do we use it for work? Yeah. Do we use it for emails? Yeah. Is Do we check the scores of the ball game? Is that bad? No. But we're addicted to everything but Jesus Christ. Oh, I love Jesus with all my heart, mind, and soul. How many times do you lay down to pray at night? Some people say, well, you need to kneel down by your bed. Whatever you do, you can talk to God anywhere, anytime. Just if you're driving down the road, we ask you not to bow your head. Close your eyes when you're driving, right? So I stop I, I, in the old days and even today. Lay down in bed and start thinking about all the awesome things of God. Start in the book of Genesis, go all the way through the Bible as far as you can go. Most time, I'd never make it through Genesis. Why? The flesh is will, or the, the flesh is weak, the spirit is willing, it's all in there together, but why can't I get where I need to get for Jesus? There is a sin-cursed world that we live in. There are things we don't understand, but why is it? Why can I start praying on something, and two or three minutes later, I just wander off? 
but bring me a ball game on and I'll sit and watch for three or four hours and never blink. See, we're all that way. So we've got to pay attention to our shortcomings. So the fact that, you know, you're already good enough is tricking a lot of people straight into hell today because there's none good, no, not one. I can hear grandma say that, you know, grandma is right there <laughs> telling me that, right? Now, another thing we get into here is there's way too many hypocrites in church, and I'm not going to go because I know what old so-and-so did. And, and man, if you ever traded with him, he'd sell you a goat, and a goat was crippled. And, you know, he'd sell you a horse, and the horse was lame. And, you know, I mean, once again, some people have this vision that in business, business is business. Well, politics is politics. It's all under Jesus, and Jesus is above the line, right? And everything else is under if you're living in a day and time and you're living in something and and you think that, you know what, I, I would get saved, but man, there's just too many hypocrites in the church. You know what I would do if I was you? I would come and be one more hypocrite, okay? And I'll tell you why, because the devil is fooling a bunch of people with just completely silliness, right? Is the church a perfect place? No, some say it's a workshop for sinners, Right? Are you expecting too much out of people? Well, if you've got your eyes set on people, there's a good chance you may miss heaven because my eye should be like Peter's eye when he's walking on the water. He had his eyes on Jesus. See, we had uh, somebody posted on denominations and I shared it and somebody jumped on there yesterday, made a couple different posts. You know, some people are really got some Bible knowledge there. Some people posted about their own denomination that they liked. One was a good friend of mine. Right now, I'm not going to mention it because I don't want to get into a bunch of discussion on it. But let me tell you about the church, what it is over there in the book of Acts. Jesus said, Peter, you're going to be the rock upon which we're going to build this church. Jesus is the cornerstone. They said his cornerstone in everything else came off of Jesus's corner. And they built this thing called the church in one mind and in one accord. They didn't build the Southern Baptist Convention. They didn't be build the Free Will Baptist Convention um, as the first church. And I don't care what anybody said they didn't. The first church wasn't Peter being a Roman Catholic bishop or whatever. I'm just telling you, there ain't nothing about these denominations except the devil in there twisting this stuff and confusing you and adding works to your um, to your salvation. See, I get to heaven because I believe in Jesus, right? So Jesus saved me. We've had the doctrine of salvation, which when I got saved, I got 40 free gifts is what I like to call it, but it's the doctrine of salvation. Number one, I escaped hell. The second thing I escaped was myself. The third thing I escaped was the sin that kept me enslaved, right? The fourth or fifth thing is, you know, I'm bought with a price, Jesus' precious blood. It didn't improve Jesus' status in heaven, to die for me. So it's pure love that Jesus died for us. Now, a lot of us will look at this and say, well, there's too many hypocrites in church because I read that once you're saved, you've got this thing called eternal security. So you go do whatever you want and then you end up in hell one, I mean, heaven one day. That's not what happens when you love somebody. See, Jesus gave you the 40 free gifts the moment that you got saved. So you went on forward with the rest of your life with those 40 free gifts, if you don't take another breath from the moment you get saved, you're in the presence of the Lord when you close your eyes. See, Jesus didn't sit there and look back at your life and say, oh, we want to save you. But man, look here what you did. And then he didn't say, well, we've got this 20-year apprenticeship program. You pass the apprenticeship program and then a big test, then we'll see about you getting into heaven. That ain't how it works. See, all the promises of Jesus came to you the moment that you got saved. So the devil's telling everybody that your church is full of hypocrites. Man, the devil's teasing you, right? And let me give it to you out of Romans 14, 4. Here's the verse, right? Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? See, even if you could judge me, it's none of your business what I'm doing, right? But who art thou that judges another man's servant? Who am I a servant of? I hope I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. Well, I'm a servant of the Republican Party. Well, I'm a servant of the Democrat Party. Well, I'm a servant of the Chamber of Commerce. Well, I'm a servant of the school system, right? I'm the governor. I'm the president. I'm the, 
Listen, you better get past all that. Because who are you that judges another man's servant? To his own master shall he stand or fall. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. See, God's people should look different. We should act different. We should be doing things that are different. And at the same time, if I am that hypocrite that this guy thinks he knows, things are going to be different. But I've sat in barbershops with people and had people look me dead in the eye. And they said, when you first got saved, I didn't think that was going to work. But, you know, I listened to your radio program. We used to broadcast on WEMM at 1130 uh, every Saturday night. I was trying to catch somebody just like me that was leaving the beer joint, right? So I wanted to get people out there. I wanted to let you know, hey, somebody loves you, and that's Jesus. Somebody can forgive you, right? I'm not here to judge anybody, you know? I don't care. There's going to be Catholics in heaven. There's going to be Methodists in heaven. There's going to be independent, fundamental Bible believers in heaven. There's going to be the Southern Baptist, the Free Will Baptist, the uh, Apostolic, the Presbyterian, the Lutheran, the anybody that believes in Jesus Christ is going to be in that one church. You're not going to get to heaven and see a bunch of matchbox boxes up on Jesus's hearth in his chimney and say, okay, Catholics get in this box. All right, Methodists get in this box. See, we've watered down the true power of God because people that do want to know, what should I be doing? Well, are you a Methodist? How do you think? Do you think you ought to be able to do this? Well, if you think you should still be able to do this, get in this group. Well, if you think that you ought to wear <clears throat> a certain thing all the time, then you're in this group. And you see exactly how this thing's going. Man, how did I run out of time? again today. Listen, I got to roll. But um, you see where there's a lot to these. What we're going through are the answers to the excuses that we've all given. See, see, this is the thing. We're not, I'm not new on giving excuses, right? Every single one of us have given excuses out, right? So what I'm trying to get us to see is we've got to be the answer to people and we're the answer by being good to people, right? And we're the answer by being positive, right? It doesn't mean we let somebody run all over us, but sometimes we might get more out of that by letting somebody have their way. Well, I can remember when Lunsford would fight you for a quarter, but now he just kind of said, hey, whatever you need to do, go ahead and do it, right? It's one of the things on my dad. My dad never went to church, but he was saved when he was younger. But one of the things that make me think that he's going to be in heaven one day is, number one, eternal security. I don't believe the devil's sitting around with a, an eraser or the, that God's sitting around with an eraser erasing us when we have a bad day, okay? But here's what I do believe. I believe that there were some things that he showed in his life in as far as helping other people and caring about other people that <clears throat> showed that there was something in him that had to do with Jesus Christ, right? <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me. So I, that's all I've got to go on. Now, my mom <clears throat> clearly rededicated her life, clearly spent the last probably 20 years of her life uh, serving the Lord. So I have no problems about that. My grandparents, uh, I know three of them are in heaven. And my grandpa on my dad's side died a little bit before I was old enough to know. But a lot of people say he was one of the most wonderful people they ever met, right? So I don't know, but I could be a wonderful person. If I don't know Jesus, I could miss this thing. So please, I love you guys. I love you. I love you. I know I didn't get much time for comments. Tried to get down the road a little bit easier this morning, but um, I got to roll. So I'll catch up with your comments as soon as I can. I got to get out here and monitor this back door to ch at the school. Lord, we're thankful, thankful for all that you've done. Lord, we've posted our prayer list this morning just a little bit before this broadcast. We always want to be with our men and women in the military. These men and women have left their families. They're all over the world. They're doing these amazing things for us. And man, oh man, just such heroes to us. Not above you, Lord. Nothing is above you, but what wonderful men and women to be willing to go and protect our country. <clears throat> Our veterans that have already gone, let's open every door. Let's help them every possible way. We're so excited about the opportunity to work with the American Legion 
on some programs that are going to benefit the the not only the veterans but our schools and our school teams and our community. We're just excited for that partnership. So bless the veterans of all groups, VFWs, the American Legions that are doing wonderful things, and a lot of times they never get to the thanks they deserve. Uh, our school kids, man, they need prayer. Our teachers need prayer. Our bus drivers, we need prayer for them. Our policemen, our firefighters, our first responders, folks. I know I'm rushing through this, but take your time. If I stopped and thought about all the state policemen, all the city policemen, all the policemen, firefighters, first responders, I know I could pray for hours for these people. Man, they're heroes right here on the front lines. They're out here keeping us safe in our communities every single day. Think about them. COVID is coming back around. We lost a member of our community today, the T Tana Watts lady. Uh, what happened there was she had COVID and one of the side effects if COVID is blood clots, and I guess a blood clot moved through her body, <clears throat> and I'm not a medical person, so I don't know how it works, but I guess it was almost an immediate situation, so there was no pain and suffering, um, you know, and of course, I wasn't there, so I shouldn't maybe even say that, but I guess what I'm saying, I wouldn't want to lay around, and if I'm leaving this world, I want to close my eyes, and I want to wake up in the presence of the Lord, and there's no doubt from the testimony this lady left that she was that way. The shepherd kids this week, as their house burned down, think about them and the family uh, and get them what they need back. Uh, and once again, our medical people, our, our hospitals, nursing homes, clinics, if COVID's coming back around and you're starting to see some of the side effects, I know some people were against the vaccine, but you know, when you see somebody that was completely healthy, had a little swelling in their leg, goes into the doctor's office, the doctor says, pop up on this table, let me check it out. And then in minutes, they're gone from this world. Life is fragile. Please, folks, I beg you today, think about this thing. Message one of us on here. Listen, we'll help you get there. We'll help you. We'll send you the verses. We need you to know that God loved you so much that he died for you. We need you to realize where we're all at, where we've all been, and that's that we're all sinners and we've all come short of the glory of God. And we want to get you to this place called heaven. We love you. Again, we ask you to forgive us, Lord, where we fail you. And we'll give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, folks. Have a great weekend. We love you guys. Michael Richardson, so good to see you. I hope you're doing good uh, down there in Florida. I guess most people in Florida get that sunshine every day. You must be doing pretty good. So, Good to see you guys. Good to see you. Matthew Harris. Just keep doing. You're doing phenomenal work for Jesus Christ and for this program. Matthew's got us out all over the world from YouTube and Instagram and LinkedIn to TikTok. And, you know, once again, oh, I don't like social media. Well, I don't care if you like it or not. Every time we push something into social media for Jesus Christ, it's a space the devil doesn't get. You guys have a wonderful weekend. See you soon.